Hi, welcome to Double Bill Movies. Uh, I'm Trevor, and this is going to be a slightly different episode to just um, the original and a remake. Um, this is what I'm going to call Double Bill Movie Discoveries. Basically, films that I've either blind brought or because of my old job, um, I had to watch at work, and I thought, wow, this is a great movie, so I'm going to purchase it. Anyway, so both of these movies, um, I was paid to watch at my old job. Just to fill you in briefly, it was quality assurance, and um, we worked on what they call check discs. Um, you may have seen, if you follow 88 or Arrow on Facebook and stuff, them posting pictures of the check discs, and that's the sort of thing that I would have to sit and watch, have to watch all the load sequence, make sure all the warnings were there, um, when in the feature, make sure that all the audio channels are present, make sure there's nothing wrong with those audio channels, um, make sure it's in sync, and all this set, you know, all the all that fun stuff. Um, we did have to watch some drivel, some really bad things, but most of the time we got to watch some really good films, and um, these are two of them. So the first one, is actually a Tim Burton film and this is a lovely edition and this is called Nine. Um, now as you know Tim Burton films they're, they're kind of they're quite dark and um, some really great imagery um, and this is about these sort of sack dolls and um, they kind of go on this journey as, as you know as they do in this and this is a fully CG animated movie um, there's no live action in it at all um, and let's see if I can find an image so yeah that gives you kind of an idea of uh, what the imagery, imagery is um, yes and they kind of have this um, certain style of army in let's say you know based on a rather unscrupulous army from the past um but hey you know why not use that as a uh, inspiration um come on with some images of uh these dolls oh there's one image there um but um, yeah, it was a one. It just looks amazing. Um, like I said, the imagery, the, the color palette used, um, and obviously the sound for this kind of movie is built up from scratch. Um, so everything has to be created. Um, and so the sound for this movie, I, I really, really like. Um, sound is something I'm obsessed with. <laughs> Um, I do have a very good ear, so I like to hear things properly, if, if possible. Um, now, I know these are not the best speakers in the world, but they sound great for this room. Um, they fitted my budget, and anyway. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's nine, and uh, got to watch it at work, as I said. Um, it would be nice... To see it on 4k i think it would look pretty spectacular in 4k actually and as it's a universal title um hopefully sometime in the future we'll see one now another one i got to see uh, is an actual horror film um and this one is based on a true story and they've taken this true story and they've just spun their own um spin-off story around it and it is called the Dyatlov Pass Incident. And it's a, a nice lenticular sleeve there. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to purchase this until I could find one with a sleeve. Because um, I did the usual thing of seeing it in HMB and thinking, oh, I don't really have the money at the moment, so I'll wait. Trying to be a good boy and all that. Um, only to find that then I couldn't find a copy. 
So I had to find this in, um, well, I think it was Game or something like that, one of these second-hand shops. Um, so I was pretty chuffed to find it with the sleeve. But, um, so it's, it's, if you haven't seen it, it's based on um, these student filmmakers and they want to make a documentary about the Dyatlov Pass incident. Um, about why these hikers went up into the mountains and never came back. They just disappeared until X amount of years later when their bodies were discovered. And then it was inexplicable as to why they appeared the way they were and uh, what had happened to them. They, there's no explanation. Um, so, of course, they go to the location to investigate and film their documentary. And um, you, at the beginning, you're introduced to the characters and uh, the, the sound recordist is female. Now, there's nothing wrong with that at all, but she is, um, oh, I've forgotten her name. Well, I wrote it down somewhere. One moment. No, I didn't. Oh, this is terrible, isn't it? Silly me. Let's put my glasses on. Oh, yeah. Gemma Atkinson. There we go. Put the glasses on. You can remember. Now, she is currently, I think, um, a radio DJ here in England. Um, but she also took part in um, a program we have called Strictly Come Dancing. And... And I'm watching this very gorgeous looking four figured woman and I'm like, hmm, I recognize her from somewhere. She's on the radio. OK, but where do I recognize her from? And then it clicked that I'd seen her in this movie. So she'd had a an acting career um, for going into DJing, I suppose, and, and whatever she does now. Um, but that was kind of cool to see, uh, you know, predominantly. An American film but um, with a Brit tagging along um, and doing a very good job um, she doesn't make it through the whole movie though which is a shame but definitely worth a watch there is a twist kind of thing and maybe don't always look at the main characters um, and yeah. yeah but enjoy the picture quality in the daylight is is astonishing it's um, I would love to see this on 4K, that's for sure. Um, but the nighttime shots, basically there's a lot of colour banding um, where you get the big blocks of colour change rather than it being as smooth. Um, and that happens on some Blu-rays. It's to do with the encoding and um, I guess the compression uh, over compresses and um, the the picture cannot be reproduced properly. Um, of course, it wasn't like that originally, and even if it was filmed digitally, it wouldn't have been uh, captured that way. So that's the only downside for me um, for this film are the nighttime sequences. Um, but I have to ignore it. Again, that's the kind of thing you would have had to have looked out for at the job. Um, and maybe I did report it you know I wasn't the only one doing this kind of thing um, but if they couldn't adjust the compression in any way then they wouldn't have uh, been able to do anything about it um, but if they get to do a 4k of it then that color banding should disappear and you should get the full night sky that um, uh, the cameras captured um, so that's two double bill movie discoveries um, Check them out. I hope you like them. Um, let me know what you think of them. If you've already seen them, still, let me know what you think of them. Um, and yeah. So I've been running um, a, a music competition. Uh, and basically, I've got loads and loads of songs that I listen to, and they have movie clips in them. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below to a YouTube video of the song and um, I'll also put the time code where the, the clip is if you don't like the song you don't want it to listen to the whole thing 
you can go straight to the time code and see if you can tell me what movie it's from. Um, if I get enough viewers and enough people, hopefully, because um, I'm going to, you know, I'll keep this going till the channel grows a bit um, before I move on to the next song. And hopefully I'll get some people to take part. It'd be fun, you know. And, and if no one can guess it, then um, I know you will. I know you will, because I know enough of you would have um, seen this film enough times and you'll listen to it and go, oh, I know that, I know that. And um, so put your answers in the comments below. Let me know. And at some point, um, I should pick a winner. And um, I've got some Blu-rays that I'm getting rid of because I've got the 4K versions of now. And um, maybe that could be one of the prizes. Anyway, please like, subscribe to the channel and spread the word <laughs> and um, check out my other videos and uh, I shall see you soon. Take it easy.